Hey guys, this is John here in Los Angeles with the Apple Channel Update for Friday, November 15th, 2024. And tonight is the big uh, Tyson-Paul fight, so I want to get this knocked out of the way. This is a uh, conflicted deck, card, deck number one card, Jack of Diamonds, Six of Diamonds. Six of Diamonds. And this is an interesting card. So after the collapse, sometime after the collapse, a member of your community, one of your friends, a man with a wife and kids, starts to lose it. Uh, he's doing things that are really reckless and dangerous, and he's putting everyone at risk, and something needs to be done. And no one's willing to say what needs to be done, and no one's willing to let alone do what needs to be done. And they're all kind of leaving it up to you. So what do you do? Now, if you take on this task, you have to recognize who and what that makes you to this group. Now, think about that. So let's, sit, let's take a look at The Walking Dead, right? You've got Rick and Shane, who are both police officers. And Shane feels that he is more qualified to take care of Rick's family than Rick is because Rick was unconscious for the first four weeks of the chaos. So Shane's adjustment period was witnessed by everyone and it gave him a leadership role in the group, whereas Rick was absent and then Rick just showed up and demanded his previous role where he was like the leader of the police department or whatever. So Shane didn't feel that Rick had earned that, but Rick took it from him. Now in this case, you've got a group member who is losing their, their cool, and you can't exile them because they have a wife and kids in the group. You have to execute them. And here's the question. Do you do it in public, at like an execution? Do you have a trial? Do you do it in private where no one else can see it? Here's the real question. How do you do it? Do you openly provoke them? Do you hold a trial? Do you just sneak attack them? What's the right way to do it? I would say the right way to do it would be in public and formally. Provoke them formally. And handle it that way. <clears throat> and that way everyone sees what happened. And there's no bickering. There's no secretive nonsense about, oh, you'll take me out to the woods, would you? No, I'll do it right here in front of everyone, just like last time. So that's, you have to be prepared for that. If you're going to be in a group at the end of the world, you have to be prepared for all kinds of things to go wrong with that group. Say so we've got Tarzan number 11, John Buscema and Roy Thomas. Now this uh, concludes the Jewels of Opar story which is adapted from an Edgar Rice Burroughs story earlier. And uh, <clears throat> Tarzan, at the end of the last one, like the last page, Tarzan got his memories back, like the last two pages. And then he got smacked in the back of the head with a rifle and knocked unconscious again. So for all we know, he may have amnesia again, but he doesn't. He's tied up. He is a prisoner of the Free State of Congo, the soldiers of the Free State of Congo. And the monkeys are nearby. He is a prisoner with Albert Werper. And the monkey, Tarzan sees and hears the monkeys. And the soldiers, also uh, Jane is, so now we cut to Jane, who had been chased up into a tree by a lion. The last time she, the last time she saw Tarzan, it looked like he got shot. So for all she knows, uh, he could be dead. She never knew that he had amnesia. She never knew anything about Albert Werper being a traitor. But so she gets down out of the tree and immediately gets caught by the Obsidians. And Tarzan uh, is out alone after escaping from the monkeys. Ahmed Zek goes in the other direction. Um, the monkeys broke into that camp. No, the monkeys are breaking in right now. What am I talking about? Tarzan's not out alone. Tarzan's right. Tarzan is still in the camp tied up and he's calling the monkeys. This actually takes a few pages. 
This book, we get a lot of good, uh, good thick panels. Not, we don't get a lot of nine panel pages, is what I'm trying to say. We get a lot of good art. So here, it takes Tarzan a little bit to call the monkeys into the camp. He knows they're nearby, but he calls the apes into the camp. They attack. Several of them get shot. Some of them get killed. But Tarzan's calling them to set him free, to, to, to release him from his ropes. And they eventually do get to him. They carry him and Albert Werper off as he asks them to <clears throat> out of the camp. The monkey carrying Albert Werper gets shot and he happens to have the pouch of jewels on him. And Albert Werper finds this out. Tarzan is freed. He sets Albert Werper free. There's a line in here about him not letting Tarzan see that he's stealing the jewels from this ape. So these jewels have been through like everyone's hands. But now Albert Werper has them again and Tarzan tells him to wait here while he goes after Jane. Albert Werper of course immediately runs off and Tarzan, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Albert Werper immediately runs off Jane is in the middle of another lion attack because the lions are hungry. The lions of the jungle are like a plague. They're everywhere. They're like sharks. There's always sharks who patrol these waters. So Jane is being confronted by a lion and instead of this being a pinup later in the book, it is finally a panel, a full page panel instead of a pinup later. Tarzan rescues Jane by shoulder checking a lion that had threatened her. He fights the lion, but he doesn't have his knife, so it's just hand to hand. And now here's the hard part. As soon as you do this bit where you catch the lion's jaws and you're holding him up, the next thing he's going to do, this panel right here, is bring those back legs up and find your stomach and rip it open. And Tarzan luckily turns just in time and throws the lion right before he can step up with his back legs and bury them in Tarzan's midsection and rip his stomach out. They've done that a few times already here in the book. And Tarzan actually, break, Tarzan actually has to slam him with a rifle and then bury the rifle barrel in the lion's throat. And that's how he escapes this line. And this is getting close to the end of the book. And these are still, this is a five panel page right here. This is, these are only six panel pages. We've only got a few pages left. Usually these would be nine panel pages, but not this, not this time. So this is really nice. I should hold it up a little bit longer. And I should back up a couple pages because this bit where Tarzan carries Jane off before he attacks the lion, all of these, these pages, these six pages are really pretty, you know, magnificent. Look at how amazing this artwork is. Each panel on this page and this page too. This is just, this is a great layout. Here we get Tarzan coming back to where he told Albert Werper to wait for him. And of course he has not. He has gone on. They go to the camp, the um, Ahmed Zek's camp. It's been destroyed. They go to their home ranch. It's been destroyed. But they do meet the Waziri who are nearby. And they, you know, welcome them back. And they're going to rebuild the ranch. <clears throat> now this is actually... Oh, Mungabe is not dead, which everyone is very happy to see that Mungabe is not dead. <clears throat> and here we get down here, these, all this bit is months later. They find Albert Werper's corpse and the jewels of Opar. And all is well in the, uh, in the jungle. Everything is back to the way it used to be. So no nine panel pages. <clears throat> T 
Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, number 11. So, yeah. What more can you ask for, really? Whoa. Roy Thomas and John Buscema. <clears throat> so, what do I want to talk about today? Do I have any nonsense like collectors versus speculators? Not really. I've spent the last, I don't know, yesterday, all week, really, going through boxes and boxes of art. I have like three boxes of art, three big boxes of art. And looking through the same stuff digitally for one page that I cannot find anywhere. And I am incredibly frustrated. So I'm assembling, I have a bunch of short stories that, I have a bunch of short stories that I wrote and short stories that I drew. And they're not always the same thing. And uh, I'm assembling the drawn stuff and starting to put together a few of them to build out our first three issues. But yeah, I'm just looking at all the boxes and stuff around and it's, uh, it's pretty overwhelming. And it's really frustrating to not have found it. I found all kinds of other stuff that I don't remember drawing at all. Stuff I don't remember having seen in, that I probably haven't seen in years. But this one page, and I've seen it recently. <clears throat> like I've seen it in the last six months. I did this once not too long ago and I remember having seen it then. Or I saw it digitally, but I can't find it for the life of me now. And so it's hard to think past that. <clears throat> yeah. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.